welcome back to It's Only Paper and I'm Lisa and I'm going to be working in my neglected um, weekly journal this week. I haven't actually been in it since Feb and I was doing a Zoom with my patrons so I filmed it so that I could share the process with you. I'm using bits and pieces from like my kits actually there's some from like last month some from this month so I'm just like using a whole load of it and I am catching up from Feb I think right now I'm full of cold at the moment and I'm doing a voiceover so I'm sorry if this doesn't sound amazing but this particular crafty session was just a really relaxing one and it's just so nice sometimes when you're just chatting with friends and crafting it just feels really really good so I've got my um, border punch here I decided I wanted to have the scalloped edge on both sides and allow them to hang slightly over the edge on my page so that you could see it when the journal was closed I really like that kind of look and as you can see I've got a pom-pom strip on the edge I need to add a few more bits and pieces like this it's quite a new journal I only started it at the start of the year so I've got loads of time to add more and more bits and pieces like this but it's the bits that hang over the edge that make me really happy top bottom and the sides um, you can't obviously hang too much along the bottom because I like to stand my journal up and obviously if you've got too much hanging then you can't do that so it is mainly the top bottom and the sides but um let me know how you're doing with your journals lately are you still doing any sort of like daily journaling weekly journaling and are you managing to keep up i know I keep hearing that people are struggling to keep up with journaling at the moment because everyone is leading a very busy life. I took a postcard and trimmed that down so that I could create a flip page. It was a postcard that I actually painted myself to go in last month's kit for the kit subscribers, as you can see here. And I also popped a little photo of me on there. This was a dress that I found on eBay. It's Kath Kitson. And I paid £12 for it. I was really happy. The only problem that I did have it was a size smaller than what it stated and I really really loved the dress but had I have known it was the size smaller um, I wouldn't have bid for it so I didn't end up saying anything because I like the dress but it's just a little bit tight I want to take it to Disney with me next month to wear in or not next month when we go to wear around Toy Story but it's really tight around the top part and under my arms so I'm a little bit reluctant anyway I am playing with some paper here I've also included some fabric I got sent some happy mail from one of my youngest subscribers um, sweet Imogen and she was so sweet and in it was a load of fabric which I absolutely loved and I thought the pink fabric added not only a nice bit of texture but also I loved the pink against all the blues. I just thought that was just such a nice combination. So I've added a little square, as you can see on the left hand side. One of the papers in the April kit has all these strips. I love creating these for my kits. I just think they're really, really fun to use either on journal pages or scrapbook pages. And right now I'm just cutting a load up to pop on the page. I did use one already and that was stuck into a journal as a whole page. I didn't cut it up at all and I absolutely loved how that looked as well. But today I'm cutting them up. I like to also stick them in like individually and that's exactly what I'm doing today. So I'm just sticking them onto the page and the bits that kind of are left over, the little torn bits that I tear off, I'm sticking those into other places as well and just kind of playing with the paper. I want to create a flip on the postcard and I just thought this extra strip would be really handy to pop on here. I've also added some fabric to the tag as well. No idea what I'm going to do with it at this stage, but I just thought it looked really, really nice. As you know, I don't tend to have an end goal with my pages. I just make it up as I go along and just stick on what I fancy I don't usually have a plan for me this works out better in some ways it's like no pressure journaling and the ideas just come rather than kind of like forcing the ideas and I quite like it when that happens I just kind of like move around paper and just see what sort of looks right or what I like I've got a photo here I've been struggling with an RSI lately my wrist is not so much my wrist actually more around my thumb has been so painful and I notice it when I have long desk days that it's just so painful and sometimes it just 
I can't type anymore. I can't use my phone. So I bought myself this wrist support or thumb support. I don't know if it's helping, but every now and then I just feel like I just can't use my hand anymore and it's driving me mad. And obviously with my kind of job, um, I need my hands. It's really, really important. So I thought I would document that this week. By the way, I do get asked when I've fallen behind with my weekly journaling how I manage then to create my pages. I do make notes in my planner and I go by those. And also I take a lot of photos on my phone. So things like this was an instant memory jog. And then you've also got the date and time when you've taken it. So I find that really helpful. I t even if I'm not planning to use the photos, I just take photos of what I eat, what we're doing. And then you've got the date and time stamp and you obviously know where you've taken them. So I find for keeping up with daily, daily journal or weekly journaling, I should say, a combination of making a few notes and taking lots of photos really, really helps me. As I've got the green on the other side, I thought I would just tear off a few strips and pop it on the other side to match as well. I didn't want loads of green, but just a little bit so that it kind of like pulls the two sides together. I've also got um, a photo of our little dog, Poppy. I've just popped that on the back of the postcard. Basically, it was about pancake day and we wouldn't usually or we never used to feed Poppy non-dog food. We were really, really strict with Poppy's diet and um, it's now got to the stage where she's 14 this week and I was going to say we don't really care. We do care because obviously we don't want to cause her an upset tummy or something because she's not used to people food. But since she's got older, we've definitely relaxed more with her food. And I baked her a little pancake, her own tiny weenie pancake on pancake day. Because I just think if a dog can't have treats when she's practically 14, then when can a dog have treats? So we are a little bit more generous now if I've got like scraps of like fat if I'm cutting off like from bacon for example we allow her to have those she has a quarter of a ridge tea biscuit before bedtime now and we just let her enjoy a few little snacks now if we're having like a Ritz biscuit a savory biscuit we let her have a little bit we just never ever used to share with her we didn't want to sort of make bad habits or sort of not be kind to her diet we've always been very very strict with her diet but now we think she's entitled to it she's a very old lady so um, we do indulge her a little bit now. So I'm cutting up some of the paper. There was a um, photo today and I can't remember something else. So um, I thought these would look quite nice cut up. So I've got the photo down the bottom there on the pink fabric and I'm working again on the postcard here. I did um, cut my sunshine Mrs. Brimble stamp in half and I popped half on the postcard here and half on my page. I thought that would like uh, look quite nice. I wanted, I was working on the postcard flip. Oh, there's the other word, laugh. But I didn't want to stick the flip in until the page was done. I've done that so many times. I stick everything together, but then it makes it really difficult um, creating, whether it be the journaling or whether it be actually creating on it. It just makes it easier to stick it in at the end. Back on to the left hand side of the page and I wanted to do a little bit about some planning that we're doing in the garden and this was like the start of the planning and we've since gone on started to actually work in this corner of the garden. We're making like a little coffee nook and we did actually work on it, you know when we had that nice little spell of warm weather, remember then? Um, We've kind of like transformed that area a little bit. I do actually have a video coming up on my main channel of us doing that. And it's been so much fun, but we started off like, as you do, going onto Pinterest and sort of doing a little bit of research. The actual photo that I've got on my journal here is actually from Ikea. And there's like a, a canopy type thing, which we would quite like to get. I think it would be quite nice just over the little coffee nook, which we've created. So that would be really cute. But I'm using here my Mrs. Brimble stickers. These are all from my own um, April kit, which is called Here Comes the Sun. I will leave the link below. I'm liking the bright stickers here just to add a little bit of a contrast. And I tend to do things in stages. So like sticking in the paper, sticking in the photos. So now I'm going through and adding like the stickers and things like that and then I will actually stop and do the journaling um I don't know do you do it in that way is that a normal way to do things of like doing it in stages or do you do it in areas and like focus on one area at a time and do the whole lot 
Um, I don't know, I just seem to have got in a habit of creating this way. I'm using some of the little strip stickers here, which I love. I really do love using strip stickers. I find them so easy to use and they seem to really, really make a difference to a page as well. Like I said, I don't actually plan anything I did. And I realized that although I've got this little tag, on the other side and I've got the flip with the postcard there's no actual way to stop the postcard from falling out so I decided to create a little belly band I'm just tearing up one of the chevrons here and I'm just sticking down either side of the paper and then that way the tag can just slide in I thought that was a really good way I really wish I'd moved my journal into the center I just didn't notice it and it's really bugging me now but um that just holds the tag in place so to stop it from falling out. So um, this is now the next day. I finished off my page off camera. Um, I just, sometimes I find that easier. It's just like not thinking and just doing. Um, I still need to finish off my tag. I just realized I haven't finished that off yet. And I wanted to add some more color as well. So I have reached for my oil pastels. I tend to go through phases with things and I'm loving these at the moment. I don't know what I'm doing with this actually. I do like that though. So I'm gonna add a little bit of hot pink around the edges. Just a little bit like that because I think that will add a lovely little bit of color like that. Um, let's do the same around here and let's add some here as well just really roughly it looks all right when you look at it from a distance but if you look at it close up you just think oh what child's done that but from a distance it looks really nice that little bit of extra color <laughs> Let's pop some. This doesn't look so good down there. Let's pop some pink on here. Like that. Whee! Helps if it's in screen, doesn't it? Oh, I can't wait to shift this cold. It's just lingering this week. There. Um, let's add some pink on here. Like that. And on here as well a little bit around the outside like that I think that looks cute and I am just going to check my notes and see if there's any extra things I want to journal I quite like that extra colour on there so that's the last of my page that's all done I've um, got a little flip bit there, and there's a little tag. I, have, I still haven't done that, but I'll just leave that. I did finish off the journaling about Louis and his passport. Actually, I might include a picture of Louis's passport and the details there, which obviously I don't want to do on camera. So I'm going to do that. And that's the 28th to the 3rd of March. So I'm a teensy wincy bit behind, but um, I'm pleased with that and I've had fun, which is the main thing. But thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed my lovely colorful page and I look forward to seeing you in the next journaling video. Thank you, bye.